you guys know on this channel, I am all about being raw and open and honest about grief and how much it sucks and what can we do to make it better. I'm gonna be completely raw and honest in this video. I am practicing what I preach. I have had a rough couple of weeks and honestly, I was headed towards a breakdown. I was in an extremely deep depression and funk. So I wanted to share with you guys kind of what was causing it and also explain the steps that I took to kind of reverse it and get myself back on track. I thought that would be super helpful for you guys if you are in the grieving process, if you are in a funk yourself, if you're suffering from depression, just to show you what I did and, and that I'm kind of not only talking the talk, but walking the walk along with you guys. So if you're interested in hearing about that, stay tuned. Grief is ridiculously difficult. And I talk all the time about how it is not just a straight path. It is not like you just get better day by day. It is just waves that crash around you. And sometimes you can get through them and sometimes they knock you down. And I have had a few weeks where those waves were just kind of holding me underwater and I could barely catch my breath. And I really just didn't know how to describe it to people other than I was in a funk and I was just sad and overwhelmed. The first thing that I knew was contributing to my funk was my work. If you know any teachers or if you are a teacher, <laughs> teaching is exhausting to begin with. But this time of the year where there's like a stretch and the weather's getting nicer, but you can't be outside and the kids are sick of doing most things and everybody's just kind of waiting for the end of the year at this point and behaviors definitely kind of go on the uptick and I was dealing with a lot of student behaviors that were really frustrating and honestly like made me sad because some of the things I was dealing with were just <clears throat> attitudes that these kids have that are mean towards other kids and that is, it's just really frustrating for me and difficult to deal with. So that was the first thing, just kind of work stress, which a lot of people have, so maybe you can relate, nothing, nothing unusual there. The next thing I've talked about, I know on my morning coffee podcast, it is competition season for my daughter's dance studio and I have been struggling seeing the pictures from the competitions and and I always explain it to people like my dance family knows that I adore them and they know that I am so supportive of them and I I love those girls I love their moms I love the teachers but it is so freaking hard to watch all of Libby's dance friends going on with their lives and you know trying on their new costumes and posting pictures from the competitions and it's impossible to see those things without getting sad and just feeling jealous and frustrated and, and wishing that I could be there and I could be watching Libby up on stage with them. And this year, more than other years, I would say, it has really hit me just how much they're growing. And, you know, when you lose a child, I think one of the hardest parts is not knowing what your child would have grown up to be. So I see all of Libby's friends and it's been long enough now that they're in those, they're coming up on those teen years and they're growing so fast. And all of her friends are changing from little girls into young women. And, and I'm so sad that I don't get to see that. Uh, it would have been amazing. and. So it's just hard to see the pictures of her friends growing up and looking like beautiful young women instead of the little girls that I remember and, and wishing that I could see my daughter like that. I would say the third thing that is contributing, and this might seem weird, and I don't mean to sound ungrateful at all. If you don't know, I am, I wrote a book and this is 
the hardcore promotion time for that book. Um, and, you know, it's coming out on April 2nd. And so I'm doing lots of podcasts and, you know, online promotion and that kind of stuff. And you would think that that would be a happy thing. And it is, don't get me wrong. Like I am, I'm proud of myself and I am excited of, about what I've accomplished. And I'm excited to get my book out there and to help people. And all of those things are amazing. And I've definitely had moments of joy in the process, but it's also been really hard. I mean, there is a definite, I don't want to say dark side. That sounds really dramatic, but you know, the dark side there's, there's, it's a really challenging side to self-publishing and especially being an introvert, it is, it's sometimes difficult to put myself out there. For one, I hate selling. Like I, I hate, there's such an ick factor with the promotion, like the please buy my book. <laughs> like I really need to get reviews and like begging people for, you know, to buy copies and, and worrying so much about the algorithm on Amazon so that you, you know, become a bestseller in a certain category. And there's so much to it that it kind of sucks the fun out of it. And now these jerks have sucked all the fun out. And I found myself like, for example, when the ebook first came out, it, you know, a bunch of people that I know ordered the ebook and it shot up and it became a number one new release. But then as time goes on, you know, you watch it drop down and drop down and drop down. And now it's like way down in the hundreds, you know, instead of at number one. And I had to kind of teach myself to stop looking <laughs> um, because it was making me really sad. And I'm like, what else can I do? And I'm hoping when the paperback and the audiobook release that it'll bump it up again. And I, and I know that that's the process. It's just, it's hard to see that happen, I guess. I'm also kind of worried about the money. If I'm be I'll just be completely honest with you guys. I spent a lot of money between the editing and the cover and the audiobook and, and all the stuff that goes along with it. It's expensive. It is really expensive. I'm going to keep it real. And I don't make any money from what I do with grief at all. I have lost thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, YouTube. <laughs> you think I made money from YouTube? The grand total I've made from YouTube in what almost two years now is less than two hundred dollars. Um, so this book is really kind of the way that I was hoping that I could recoup some of the money that I've spent. Um, but I'm finding out that book sales really don't like unless you knock it out of the park with a bestseller. And honestly, self-published authors don't often do that. It's almost impossible to make any money by selling books because the margin of profit that you get is just not, it's just not there. So most people, when they self-publish a book, they, you know, lead people to buy a course or try to get speaking engagements that pay and try to turn it into a business kind of thing. And, and that's the thing, like, I'm not, I don't like putting people into sales funnels and, and doing all of these sketchy things that you need to do. I love to write. I love to write. I like making videos. It's the salesy stuff is just not, it's just not my vibe. And, and I've been pushing myself to try to get out there and, and make this into something that can make money. And it just has not worked for me at all. So so that's been really frustrating and stressful. And yeah, okay. So those are the problems. Thank you for listening to me whine for the past five minutes. Playing the world's tiniest violin. <laughs> but, but that was it. That Those were the things that were kind of putting me in a big funk. And when you are going in a funk like that, you just start to think negatively. And, and I noticed that I was getting hit so much harder with the grief stuff because of other stuff that was going on around me. So it seems like everywhere I go, I see moms and daughters and I see girls that are about Libby's age and it's just hitting me really hard right now for some reason. And with the book, 
I miss my parents. I, I wish so much. Like when my book did hit that number one new release, <laughs> I wanted to call my parents and say, hey, dad, like, hey, I'm a number one new release. You can't call a friend and say that because then you sound like a jerk, like you're bragging. And But you could call a parent, you know, and I, I keep laughing because it's like, yeah, I'm a middle-aged woman, but I still wish that I could feel that pride from my parents. And sometimes they're the only people that can give you that, like, you know, oh, good job. We're proud of you. <laughs> And I know that's ridiculous, but I've been missing them because of that. So, okay, so. So, what are you going to do about it? I'm moving on to solutions. Stop complaining, Brooke. Move on to solutions. Okay, so things that I did. I, first of all, again, I'm introverted. It's not really my nature, but I knew that I needed support. So, I reached out to people to get that support. And I went with my ride or die people. So I've talked about David, you've seen him on my podcast. He's Libby's father, my ex husband. I called him the one day and he came over and I just sobbed. Like it was just like, I knew that I needed to talk to someone about everything that I was feeling. And I knew that I needed to get it out. And and he allowed me to do that just to talk and he understood. And I just cried and cried. And sometimes that crying is such a relief, just getting it all out and telling somebody about it. Um, so I, I did that for myself and it helped. That helps. I have a friend, Bianca, that I walk with. So I vented to her and went outside and we were in nature and went on a walk and I told her everything that was going on. So I always say how important it is to have that support, have somebody, it doesn't matter who it is, just find somebody that will let you just talk it out because talking it out helps so much and crying. If you can like it, getting those emotions out is so important rather than trying to like work them away or bottle them up. So that was key for me. Um, I did things that I enjoyed. So one day I was working on stuff for the book and I was just getting so stressed and, and frustrated with it. And I just stopped and I made peanut butter. And peas. It's very random. Um, but it was just like, you know what, I'm just, I'm just going to sit this aside for now and I'm going to do something that I enjoy doing. I watched a couple movies instead of continuing to check my Amazon numbers and, Instead of scrolling on Facebook and seeing those competition pictures, I did more of a digital detox and I stopped going on my personal account. And it's hard sometimes because people send me messages on there and then I click to see the messages and then I kind of go down the rabbit hole and I really made a concerted effort to not do that um, as much over the past week or so. And, and that has helped. It's helped not having the constant reminders. Um, I decided to set smaller goals for myself just because I was overwhelmed with the book promotion and, and trying to keep <laughs> growing, you know, in my subscribers and follower counts. And sometimes that can just be, it can be so frustrating if you're not getting where you want to get. So I just set smaller goals for myself. I set up a new schedule. If you didn't notice, first I took a break. I took a content break for a week um, because I just didn't feel like doing anything. And that was another way that I knew that stuff was wrong because I, I never do that. <laughs> and I'm very, very consistent. And I'm like, you know what? I just don't want to do it this week. And, and I didn't do it. And I tried not to beat myself up too much about it. But then once that week was over, I was like, you know what? All right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna figure out how I can make this more sustainable for myself. So I made the decision that for the morning coffee podcast, which was every Sunday at 11, I'm going to do that every other week now. Um, because it was getting to the point where it was stressful, like making sure that my guests were available. I had some people that like no showed and then I didn't have 
I, I didn't know what to do and I didn't have anything I wanted to ramble about that day. Um, and I felt like I was letting people down and, and that was upsetting me. So I think rather than kind of deal with that stress on a weekly basis, I'm going to go to every other week and just take it a little bit easier on myself. And if I want to bump it up later, I can. And if I have to make it once a month, I can. And, you know, there's no one. I'm, I'm doing this for myself and for you guys to help you out. So it's there's no one holding over, you know, a paycheck or anything over me because it's just something I do for us. So, um, so it's okay if I do that for myself. And I also um, made a schedule for myself as far as posting. So I tried to be really organized with it and set the goal of like each day of the week, I have sort of a theme. And one day I was just, I happened to be in a more productive mood and I just planned out a good five months worth of posts that I could do um, and just simplifying it to that schedule of a certain post each week and like the sales posts for my book and trying to get people to, to pre-order and buy or whatever. Twice a week, I'm going to do it. And then I feel like I'm not annoying people and it takes away that ick factor a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, so setting those small goals that I feel like are achievable and just giving myself a little bit of a break and realizing that I'm human and it's okay to have the feelings that I'm having and it's okay if I need to slow things down a bit. Um, it was all really helpful. So at this point, I'm feeling better. It is still a rough time for me. It's a rough Libby time. It's a rough missing my parents time but I will get through it just like you guys can. I keep saying like, I, I it's what I tell you. I, I, I don't tell you guys anything. I didn't write anything in my book that I didn't do myself or that I wouldn't do myself. It's one foot in front of the other every day, just doing what you can. And, and that's what I'm doing right now. And hey, I'm back making a video for this week. So already an improvement, I guess. Okay, I feel like that was a big long ramble. I'm really sorry if that was boring, but just wanted to share kind of what I've been going through and, and what I did to help myself. So if that was helpful for you. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to increase the ick factor right now and say that if you would like to pre-order a copy of my ebook, Grief Sucks, But Your Life Doesn't Have To, it is available on Amazon right now for pre-order. If you are waiting for the paperback or the audiobook, those are available April 2nd. So mark your calendars, April 2nd, to 2024. Um, is the official release of Grief Sucks But Your Life Doesn't Have To, I would love for you to grab a copy if you think it would help. Okay, that is all for this week. I will see you guys in next week's video. As always, if you have any topics that you want me to talk about, please leave them in the comments. I am always open to suggestions and happy to make videos that you guys would want to see. If there's anything that you're struggling with specifically uh, that you want me to talk about, I'd love to hear from you guys. So leave me a comment, give me some ideas and suggestions, and I will catch you guys next week. Sending love and hugs. As always, 